It's your lucky day, Marvin. I'm making you baby food from scratch. You love bananas and blueberries, so I'll use those. And I'm going to sneak in some healthy vegetables that you won't even taste. You can't understand what I'm saying, right? Yay for secret vegetables! Okay, Marvin, I need to start the blender, and it's pretty loud, so don't be scared. That's not the blender. What was... Oh, no. Ugh, Marvin, how can someone so small make such a giant smell? And how does food that tastes so good going in end up looking and smelling so bad when it comes out? I think we need professional advice. I knew we still had it. Look, Shelly, this is what I was telling you about. Do you know how fast you could move on one of these? Let's try it. Okay, Shelly, push off with your foot. Ride like the wind! Well, maybe that's enough excitement for one day. I have a soccer game tomorrow, so I should be practicing anyway. Hey, Drew. I need to talk to you about poop. Well, hello to you, too. Seriously, Nia, it's a mystery to me. Like, I love making food and eating food and taking pictures of food. But how does this beautiful, delicious food end up like, you know... Poop? I love talking about poop. I have two older brothers and pet rabbits, so my family talks about it a lot. It's not really a mystery. Right, Shelly? I, I understand the first part of the um, process. When we chew food, our teeth, tongue, and saliva, spit, break the food into small pieces that we swallow. Right. That's where the whole digestion process begins. What happens next? The food travels down the esophagus and into the stomach. The acidic juices break up the food into even smaller parts. Don't forget about the bacteria in your gut. These tiny but hardworking buddies in your belly also help break down food. After the bacteria and stomach acid have done their jobs, what's left of the food moves through the small intestine. Organs like the gallbladder, liver, and pancreas team up and use enzymes, a special type of protein that speeds up chemical reactions, to pull out nutrients, like vitamins and minerals, that your body needs. Then it's onto the large intestine. Mm. And when I say large, I mean it. Mm. If it weren't all coiled up like this, it would be about five feet long. Mm. Your large intestine is almost as tall as I am? I feel kind of intimidated. <laughs> this is where the magic really happens. By magic, do you mean poop? You know it. In the large intestine, more bacteria gets to work breaking down plant fiber and releasing healthy chemicals into your body. This is also where most of the water in the food is removed, leaving behind... Poop. Ta-da! The waste that your body doesn't need is ready to make its grand exit. It's stored in the rectum until you have a bowel movement, which for babies can happen pretty soon after they eat. <laughs> oh no, I know that look. Not to mention, poop comes in all shapes and sizes, and certain foods can make waste different colors. Not that I ever noticed that, because who looks at poop, right? But uh, just curious, how does the color stuff happen to other people's poop? Like, eating lots of dark leafy greens can make your poop greenish, and eating blueberries can make it look bluish. Isn't that crazy? Also, you should look at your poop, because it can tell you a lot about your health. So, I should be a poop sleuth? I prefer poop private investigator. I have to go eat dinner. Shelly's psyched because we're having kale. Speaking of leafy greens. <laughs> Bye, Drew. Bye, Marvin. What have I done?